Good evening. Let's all stand as we uh, start our worship and song this, tonight. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Please be seated. We want to welcome everybody to our evening worship here at Waterview. Um, we have a, a special speaker tonight. Uh, Tom Langley from the World English Institute is going to be bringing our message and talking about uh, the efforts that their organization does to spread the gospel throughout the world. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I hope you are as well. Um, we want to take this brief moment that at the end of the uh, service, and I'll make another announcement again, that if you have not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, there will be an opportunity later on during one of the final songs. But again, we thank you so much for being here, and uh, we will continue in song right now. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer. How he loves me, how I love him. He is risen, he is coming. Lord, come quickly, alleluia, alleluia. Will you pray with me, please? 
Our dear, gracious, and heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day, for another, another wonderful Lord's Day. And Father, we are so thankful for all the blessings that we know come from you. And Father, as we uh, begin our service tonight, they are, we uh, would like to lift up some of our number uh, to you in prayer. Father, we'd ask that you be with the Jim, Jim Alexander family as they have uh, the loss of Jim's mother. Uh, just be with them and comfort them, Father. Uh, wrap your loving arms around them and help them with their loss. We also, Father, uh, pray for the, uh, C Celia Cagle for the loss of her father, Father. And we ask that you be with them as well and comfort that family in their loss. Be with the Dupree family, with uh, Greg's uh, father, uh, Raymond, who is undergoing treatment for cancer. We ask that you be with those that are administering the, the treatment. And we pray, Father, that uh, for a good outcome, we ask that you give him the strength to undergo all these tests and all these procedures and be with them. Father, can we ask that you uh, continue to be with those that are, are suffering that we uh, are not mindful of. We know there are many, Father, uh, in our congregation and those that we know that are dealing with sicknesses and illnesses, Father, and we pray for them. And Father, tonight we ask that you be with us as we uh, worship you in song and in prayer. Uh, we pray, Father, um, that you be with us in this service and that you, uh, that you be with uh, Brother Langley tonight as he brings us the message. Father, may we always look to you for the guidance that we need each and every day and that we'll always do those things that, in our lives that will glorify you. And Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your son and the sacrifice he made on our behalf. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen. This one, most everybody should know. I know, I believe Dustin has led it before, um, but this, this particular song has a very special place in my heart because we used to sing this at one of the summer camps I used to go to growing up in the youth group. And every time I sing it, we used to sing it out uh, under the stars. Every time I see it, I think about looking into the stars and thinking about God. So let, let's, uh, if you, if you uh, humor me for a bit, then uh, I'll have that visual. My God and I go in the field together. We walk and talk as good friends should and do. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows hue. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows hue. He tells me of the years that went before me. When heavenly plans were made for me to be, when all was but a dream of dim conception, to come to life, earth's verdant glory see. When all was but a dream of dim conception To come to life, earth's verdant glory see My God and I will go for a together We'll walk and talk as good friends should and do. This earth will pass and with it common trifles, but 
God and I will go unendingly. This earth shall pass, and with it common trifles, but God and I will go unendingly. If you'll stand for the song before the lesson. Altos, help me out, okay? There's a stirring deep within me. When I see my gracious Savior face to face, when all is done, is that his voice I am hearing? Come away, my precious one. Is he calling me? Is he calling me? I will rise up. I'll rise up. Please be seated. As you may be aware, <clears throat> our guest speaker tonight is Tom Langley. Tom is the president of WEI, or the World English Institute. Uh, they have a program. It's free to anyone in the world as long as you've got a internet access and an email address you can get free english language lessons and that's that's their cornerstone yes uh, tom was here in april we had a meeting at the south end of the building and with him was bill stewart i know some of you know bill a lot of you may know bill he was from the bear valley bible institute bill passed away in july but at that meeting, he was there promoting Church Plants International. That was one of his organizations that he created. And working with Tom, they were planning a church plant in Armenia. And that church plant took place at the end of June, beginning of July. Bill was not able to make it, but at that meeting, I was able to see how Tom and his WEI organization worked with organizations like Church Plants International. They were going to plant a church in Armenia, and that location had been selected based in large part to Tom's organization. Through their stu student enrollment, they had such a high enrollment in their, in their program in Armenia that it was just stood out as a location they needed to go to. I, rem I remember a couple of numbers. You may have to correct me on this, but at that time, he said they had 10,000 students enrolled from the country of Mongolia. I thought that was a, an incredible number. And then when he said that on a, on a typical, in a typical month, they would get 10,000 students to enroll into their program. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of teaching. 
and I'm pretty sure he's here tonight to ask for a little help. And I know that Paulo Ross was passing out some information, a small a pen and some information on access to the site. If you might need that during this program, if you, Ross, uh, Paulo is back there, you can raise your hand, he'll pass one out to you. So uh, I don't have anything else to go to say right now, so uh, I'll turn it over to Tom and you can okay. tell us more about WEI and what we can do to help you. Okay, it's so nice to be here. I appreciate so much the invitation to come here. But what I want to say first before I get into the presentation, uh, it was announced for, to invite you all to bring your internet device to church, and I hope you did that. If you did not, if you have a phone, a smartphone, you can get on the internet right now. And the purpose for that was if you look at the, uh, at the slide right here, this URL right here, if you, if you type that into your telephone, or your tablet, or your whatever, uh, world, it's www.worldenglishinstitute.org slash register slash teacher slash CID 1205-2021. If you type that in right now, you automatically will receive a WEI account. You will be a teacher. We have a screening process, as you might imagine. Every, anybody who registers to be a teacher, obviously we cannot allow that. So we have a screening process. And sometimes it takes a day or two once you register to become a teacher. But for Waterview tonight, for 48 hours, if you use this URL right here, you will become a teacher immediately, automatically. You will be looking at your account tonight on your phone or your tablet. And I see some of you doing that right now. So I'll give you just a second to, to do that. And young people, if you got your phones... If you're over the age of 16, we will accept you as a teacher. You can be studying with students from any country in the world. It may be the only time that you will ever be asked to take out your phone in church and use it. So, okay, so that's, uh, uh, as you are doing that, I would like to just take a moment and thank the elders uh, for inviting me to be here and to share with you our ministry. I want to thank my my brother, Paolo, we've worked together overseas on several mission plants. He's with the church, the church plants ministry and, uh, and his hospitality and his friendship and brotherhood. Uh, uh, I love you, Paolo. I don't know where you are, but he's out there. And I want to thank him and Brother Cummings, uh, who set this up. Uh, Danny, it, it's been wonderful. Um, I, I really appreciate your hospitality and all that you do. My purpose here this evening is to recruit Internet teachers. Uh, uh, so that, that is why I'm here. I'm not looking for anything else, but I'm, I am looking to recruit internet teachers to teach the Bible, to be a missionary in the comfort of your own home. It is the most least intimidating way that you can, uh, you can teach the gospel and you can, and you can be effective at it because it's online you're in control of the students that you choose, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit about that later, but you'll see students coming from every country in the world who register on our site. And you can pick only females, you can pick only males, uh, all of the demographics are there on each student, and you can pick a student according to your own uh, uh, level of comfort in studying with somebody. That's my purpose. So, if you're here and you're not an internet person, Please take this information to, uh, to your children, to your grandchildren, and tell them that they can do this as well. So uh, that's why we're here. Um, I really appreciate the sermon this morning. Uh, faith produces fruit, and I don't think there's a, I just don't think there's a more meaningful fruit that we can produce with our faith than sharing our faith and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with as many people as we can. That's what this ministry is about. Okay, so uh, if you don't use that special URL, you can simply go to worldenglishinstitute.net and you can register there on our website as a teacher. Our mission statement is the worldwide spread of the gospel using innovative materials and techniques. We do that by, we have a combination English grammar course 
And the reading assignments for the English grammar that the student studies comes from the Bible. That's what WEI is. It's a combination English grammar course plus a Bible course. Uh, and so English is today's international language. If you've traveled very much abroad, you know that people everywhere, it, it is not difficult to find somebody who speaks English in almost any country in the world and and most people that you would, you would meet in another country are desperate to learn the English language. And they're desperate to improve the English language. So when we advertise for students, we tell them that we will teach you English grammar and that your reading assignments will come from the Bible. When they register with us, they know what they're getting. And believe it or not, many of them want to improve their English, but they're also more interested or at least very interested in learning the Bible. Are, are these not the people that we want to teach? These are the seekers, and they're looking for the truth, and many of our students fall into that category. Uh, English is the most desired second language of people all over the world. It's the world language of commerce. It's the world language of technology. Um, it's the world language of communication. It's the world language of travel. English is the language of the air, of the sky, uh, if, you're, if, if you're an airline pilot, you have to be fluent in English to, to fly internationally. And it presents us with just a tremendous opportunity um, because it is the language of our heart. It's our mother language. And people want to learn this. And we want to teach them about God. So why not combine the two? And that is, that's the ministry of WEI. Uh, our courses first hit the world right after the Iron Curtain fell um, and the course had just, our basic course had just been completed, written by Dr. Richard Aidey out of Portland, Oregon. And this was all done at that time by postal correspondence, as you might imagine, was very slow. Uh, but even then, in the countries of Eastern Europe, Romania, Albania, Hungary, Bulgaria, we had 70,000 students send in an application from those countries after the Iron Curtain fell, and the ministry started there. In 2007, we put all of our material on a website, and so now we teach online, and it's fast, and it's easy to do that. One billion people want it, which is, it, it's estimated that one billion people want to either improve or learn English language in the world today. In fact, in the country of China, there are more people studying English than there are Americans studying English in our schools right now. Uh, all 7 billion people plus people in the world, I think it's up to 7.5 or 6 billion people in the world right now, every single one of them need the Bible. So 1 billion people want it, all, all the people of the world, 7 billion plus, need the Bible. And so English language plus the Bible is what WEI does. So that just gives you a basic introduction of what we do um, and what we do online. In the Great Commission, Jesus' final instructions to his disciples, uh, the la maybe one of the last things he instructed them or told them, so you know that it's very important. If it's one of the last things he told them before he ascended into heaven, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And then in Matthew, the same commission, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all things I have commanded you. And then uh, in Acts, just before he ascended into heaven, Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. Jesus said, Go. He said, go into the whole world and preach the gospel. And I think this is, how we, this is how our faith can produce fruit. This is what we are supposed to do as Christians, um, is to go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. At WEI, what we say is, go home, turn on your internet device, get in your most comfortable chair, and then go into the whole world. Isn't that amazing? We can go into the whole world from the comfort of our own home if we just have an internet device that connects us to the entire world. And even the countries of Africa and some of the other 
uh, darker countries of the world, they even have internet access in, in quite abundance right now. It's, it's simply amazing. Uh, we have every year now, for the last five or six years, we have registered students from every single country in the world except one, uh, and that is North Korea. I think back in 2016, we had one student register from North Korea, and they were able to get close enough to the border that they actually got an internet reception, and they registered on our website. But all the other countries, we have hundreds, thousands, some countries, tens of thousands, and that is correct, Danny. Uh, in Mongolia alone, back in 2015, we had over 10 thousand students that were studying the Bible in the country of Mongolia and we partnered with the church plants team we had a reception for our students these men came with came came over and stayed for two weeks and studied with students and there were scores of baptisms that followed now there's a church that's actively meeting and has been planted in the capital city of Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia um, and most of those contacts if not all of them came through uh, our student base that we had been already studying with. We, the, the seed had been planted. It had been watered. These guys showed up and harvested. And, uh, and it's just a joy to work with the church plants ministry and efforts like this. Uh, more students. We have more students than we have teachers. Uh, we have over 10,000 student registrations per month. Of those 10,000 who register, we don't count them as students. They just register. Um, many of them will not even complete the first lesson. But the students who complete a series of lessons and actually engage, of that 10,000, we, we start over 3,500 new Bible studies every month through the World English Institute ministry. Um, it's just such a blessing, and praise God for this. Uh, the thing that we need, though, are teachers. We need more teachers. We have to cut our advertising. We don't... <laughs> Every month, we might only advertise for three days. Because if we advertised for every day on our global Google advertising, we would be swamped. We wouldn't be able to provide the students with teachers we don't, because we don't have enough teachers to handle that. So right now, we have over 700 active teachers. We need 1,000. We need 2,000. Um, these numbers could be tripled. Um, every day... Generally, there's over 200 students waiting to be claimed by a teacher. I don't know what happened yesterday, but yesterday I think we had about 300 students waiting to be claimed, and something happened among our teachers because all of a sudden, 214 students were taken off our student board and claimed by teachers yesterday. I think that's a, I, I was talking to our director of teacher support, and he said, Tom, that's a record. We've never had 214 students claimed in one day. Uh, but they did that, and those students came from 55 different countries. So you can, you can get a sense of the, of the reach of this ministry. Um, teaching on the Internet is effective, and it's meaningful. You can build a close and personal relationship with your students, and you can change their lives with the saving gospel message. You may not think that having an Internet study could be very meaningful, but I promise you that it can. And you can ask Paolo. He will tell you because he's had some students um, that, that have just been amazing that he has uh, actually gone and visited in Armenia at be before he studied with them online. Then he went to meet them face to face and just um, some great stories. This was my personal Mongolian internet student called, her name was Tul Bayatara. Um, so, so I called her Julie. Um, she was my student in Mongolia um, for, for about a year, and then partnering with Church Plants Ministry, uh, we decided to, to see what we could do with all those students in Mongolia and plant a church. So we went there, and sure enough, I wrote, I wrote Julie before I went and said, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to be in your city in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and I'd love to meet you face to face. And so with some of the teachers, we met Julie, we met her, and she was so delightful, and she stayed and she studied one-to-one um, -one after the reception that we had for all of our students. She stayed and she studied with a teacher, and then I got this message from her. And if you're a teacher, there is nothing more exciting than a message like this. She said, I am here in a coffee shop reading your email. It's brought me tears I just cannot hold. It's happy tears. 
I have a feeling that I'm not alone. I have so to share with you. I believe in God and Jesus, which was a big step for her. I got baptized on Tuesday by my teacher here in Mongolia, baptized me. I start to having a relationship with Jesus and am having very many good changes and differences and also challenges too. But I know he is alive and live with us. I pay attention to him in faith. He will lead me to heaven with no worries. I will send you message and WI lesson soon. Best regards, Julie. There is nothing that you can read as a teacher that's more meaningful than that. I mean, it will choke you up when your student accepts the gospel and is baptized. And this is Julie being baptized in 2015. This was several years ago uh, by, the, by the church plants ministry um, who is now the president. His name is Gary Aragon. And he studied with her and, uh, and praised the Lord. She was baptized and became a member of God's kingdom. So we have, I just wanted to share with you a couple of these sorts of testimonies that we get in and these, the ones I'm going to share with you are, are some of the most recent. We get these testimonies in from our teachers and from students on a weekly basis now. Um, here is one. Uh, I'm going to share a few of them with you just so you get an idea. This is from South Sudan. A WI Internet student becomes a Christian, and then he became a preacher. He, preacher. he became a Christian about a year ago and then went to some Bible schools there in South Sudan uh, in the capital of Juba, I was trying to remember the capital of South Sudan, he went to some Bible schools and became a preacher. Uh, they were Church of Christ related type schools. And so now he's traveling about, he became a Christian through WI, now he's traveling about and he said, I would like to let you know that I went to Malaki town in Awil East where the Barnaba lives. And I preached for two days there and 34 people believed and were baptized into Christ. A lot of people are very interested to hear the good news there, brother. He's writing to his teacher. This is a message that his teacher sent us. Uh, the Church of Christ has been established there in Malakui town, Awil East, and they are lacking Bibles, but I encourage them to keep on worshiping at the school till they will get Bibles and shelter for the church. And so then he sent us these photos of the, the baptisms that took place after his preaching. There were several different photos. These are just a few that I, I wanted to paste up here for your encouragement. Um, but the, uh, the word is being preached. And then one of our teachers recently, WI teacher reports of five WI Internet student baptisms in Nambia, Africa. And she sent us the photos of, uh, of the, these Internet students who were baptized in Nambia. Um, most of these countries in the world, we can... Sometimes it's a little difficult, but most of the time we can locate a Church of Christ mission point or a, an existing church where when a student requests a baptism, um, we get on our network and we, we say, who, who do we know in the brotherhood who lives close to this person in this town in this country? And um, almost always, within just a matter of days, we'll, get, we'll hear of a missionary, we'll hear of a uh, a, a church or somewhere that we that we contact and link them up with our students, and our students are, are most of them study further. Uh, many of them become Christians and they're assimilated into the into the mission church there. Um, we had a teacher named Jim Wagner. He after he, this it, he's an elder at the Maryville Church of Christ in Maryville, Tennessee, where I'm a member. And after claiming over 2,000 WI students, he was going to quit. Then one day he decided to perhaps take a break for a while and slow down. He was getting a little older. And he just, but he decided, and he doesn't know why. He said, I, I went on to the account to actually close out. And he said, I don't know why, but I clicked on the student board. And he said, I saw a student from Uganda. And he said, I had a student once in Uganda who was a pretty good student. Okay, before I quit, I'm going to click on and, and study with him. So he clicked on this student, was a great student. The student loved the Bible lessons. And he loved them so much, in fact, that he, he invited his village community to come to his house once a week, and he would read the Bible lesson to them, and they would study it together. And then after some time, Joseph wrote uh, his teacher and said, and told Jim that he wanted to be baptized and he wanted to become a Christian. 
And he said, and some of, the, some of the people who I've been reading the lessons to also want to become a Christian. Well, this was right toward the end of 2020 when it was still COVID. So we had, when the COVID lockdowns were still in place, what I meant to say there, um, and, and particularly in Uganda. So we had to wait several months, but finally a man went in there and he spent two days studying with all of these people. And then we, we got the news that Joseph... And this man named Mubiru, a Christian in Uganda, got together. He went and met with all of these people. And in one day, after studying with all of them, 23 people were baptized and the church began in this village in Uganda. And these photos are some of the photos that were sent to us from that event. Uh, So you can... (laughs) What an exciting job I have. I get to open emails and read stuff like this once or twice a week. It's just, it's just unbelievable. I mean, you just fall on your knees and you thank God for the opportunity that we have to do this and the doors that he has opened through this, all because people want to learn our language and they also want to study the Bible. But once they start studying the English language with the Bible lessons, Almost all of them find the Bible lessons far more meaningful than English language could ever be. And so these students were baptized in Uganda. Uh, I love this photo here. Um, And so here is part of the group that was baptized that day uh, in this village in Uganda. Now what's interesting is since then, uh, they all got together. They were meeting in Joseph's house, which they were standing against the walls and crowded, They all got together and said, we need a shelter where we can meet. So they pulled their resources and they built a shelter. So they have a church house in Uganda. Um, And uh, uh, one of the men there is translating for his father, who I think his father is Joseph, um, while the the worship is going on. So this is their their church house. And, um, uh, And most of the people here, most of the Christians there began with a World English Institute lesson. We have another teacher named Marlene Baker. She wrote this just last month. She said, I have a student in the nation of Burundi, Africa, the state of Chiditoki. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. The city of Buganda. He has been a very interested and faithful student. He is asking to be baptized in secret. We get this a lot because a lot of our students come from the Muslim-dominated countries of the world where Islam does not allow any kind of information about Christianity or the Bible into the country. We fly under the radar because we're World English Institute. It sounds very secular. And so we're able to get into their, uh, get through their, their, their internet blocks, and we claim a lot of students from there. And many of them want to be baptized in secret because their, their physical lives are in danger under that type of government. Um, he's been a very faithful student. He is asking to be baptized in secret, so I assume he is in a place where Christianity is outlawed. He also wants to know how he can worship as Jesus wants him to. So we, we found a Christian brother, one of the leaders in the church there in Burundi, who made his way to this man. Uh, and uh, his name, the man's name was Vinat. And this is, these are photos of that day when Akimbi, the Christian, studies with Vinat and prepares him for this decision. And uh, he takes his confession and I mean, I don't know where these are, but these are beautiful pictures of the lakes. He takes these confession, his confession and he uh, baptizes Vinat that day. And he comes out of the waters of baptism rejoicing. So uh, I just think this is encouraging. And I hope it encourages you tonight. Um, we, get, we have so much bad news many times. And s- news that is very challenging in our world today. But I think that... that we need to be encouraged to know that the gospel is going out. World Bible School does an incredible job. Eastern European Missions does an incredible job internationally of getting the gospel message out to the world. So you can be an effective missionary in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to learn another language. You don't have to leave your home. You can sit there with your phone, with your tablet, with your Uh, laptop or with your desktop uh, computer and you can study with students from just about any country in the world. Um, 
so we desperately need teachers. Uh, just very quickly, I don't want to. I, I don't like to get into numbers too much. I think people get lost in numbers. I know that I do sometimes, but. Uh, just to show you that through the years how the ministry has grown. In 2007, we, we started 4,200 new Bible studies with about 600 students with 64 teachers. We were so excited. We said, man, studying by the internet is something really, really great. Look at how many we started. We had no idea how this would explode. In 2019, we started 227,799 new Bible studies with 30,179 students. At that time, we had 730 teachers. We've been stuck on about 730 active teachers for a few years now. So if, you're, if, 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 if this is not your ministry, if you're not interested in that, please tell others about it and, and help us recruit more teachers. In 2021, we're on track right now to, have, to be starting over 350,000 Bible studies with 50,000 students. We need at least 1,000 teachers, so we need to recruit about 300 more active teachers uh, to, to keep growing the ministry uh, like this. Um, so you can share your faith in the Word of God with students ready and willing to receive your instruction. The amount of time you spend on this is up to you. You can claim as many students as you want. You will see the country, the age, the gender, the religious background, the occupation. You'll see all these things about the student before you claim them. Uh, and you must claim. Now, this is the thing that if, if, you're, if you're there and you got your, you're on the account right now, here's something you need to know or if you're going to become a teacher it's very easy to do. It doesn't take long to learn the platform. It's very easy. But if you're going to become a teacher, one of the things that you need to know is that we're sowing seed. And sometimes the seed falls on difficult soil. Sometimes it falls on uh, impossible soil. And sometimes it falls on good soil. And so when you claim students, that is sowing the seed. Sometimes you have to claim 10 students to get one or to get two really good students that's going to finish the, the material in the curriculum. And so it's really a numbers game. You just keep sowing seed, you keep claiming students, and you will get some good ones. Uh, but we have a lot of teachers that will only claim three, three students, and for some reason those students don't engage, and they get discouraged, and they never claim anymore. You have to keep claiming. Uh, it's, it, 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 you, the the seeking souls and the seeking hearts are out there. You just have to claim students to find them. Um, and also what we can do in working with the, ministry, the mission ministry here, I'm sure that you are, all are involved in other countries of the world, we can actually target cities of the world with our advertising. So we can target one city and shoot ads in there, and if anybody in that city sits down at an internet, uh, online, gets online, and they do a search for a free English course. Our ad pops up first on the, uh, on the search engine. And so when we target advertise for different cities, we can get hundreds more students very quickly. Um, we pay a little bit more to do that, but we do that for mission locations. If you're involved in a, in a mission site or a city somewhere in the world, and you say, we want our missionaries to have students to study with, we'll target that city with ads. And then you will be studying with the Bible with students from the place where your missionary works. And when those students want to study more and learn more, you just get in touch with your missionary. You connect them with the student. And we do this with many churches. Uh, so it's a great way um, to be, for you to be involved in the mission work of the church that you, of the, of the mission site that you support uh, and sponsor. And so we can do this, and, uh, and you can be involved with that work. We also use the material in one-to-one -one teaching. We have WI summer schools where we go overseas to different locations, and we study one-to-one. -one. We just take them through the material. And the material is fantastic. It begins in Genesis with creation, and it systematically goes through the Bible and concludes with the plan of salvation in the New Testament. So when a student finishes our basic course, they know what they have to do to become a member of God's kingdom. Um, and so we, we can also do this with, if there are international residents in your community right here in Richardson, you could run some ads 
And you could fill up some of these classrooms with people who live here in your community that want to improve their English. And you all could sit face to face with them and just take them through the material. The material teaches itself. Very, very easy to do. These are English as a Second Language Outreach Ministries. We have several congregations here in Texas. Uh, a couple in the Houston area are doing this, I know. They're, they're using the WI material as a local outreach, kind of like you might do with Friends Speak or Let's Start Talking. Uh, it's the same idea, uh, but it, uh, using our material, you can do that as well. And so then we have the receptions, which we're, where we partner with Church Plants Ministry, and we host a, a reception for all of our teachers, all of our students in one location. The teachers come in, we introduce them to the teachers, and they study uh, with our internet students one-to-one. -one. Um, there are different ways you can be involved in WI. Um, so we have thousands, and, and that's what I just mentioned, the Church of Christ Church Plants Mission Ministry, who we partner with. Uh, thousands of students in different cities of the world will go in there and contact those students to study with them face-to-face. -face. You could be a part of that if you're interested in doing some international travel um, and you're capable of doing that. Uh, Paulo Ross is, is a part of that, a main part of that ministry. You could talk to him. He's a member here. Um, so these are, these are our WI reception in Moldova, and these are all the students who came to the reception signing up for one-to-one -one Bible studies. Um, and here is our reception in Yerevan, Armenia, which just took place, which Brother Danny mentioned. And there's Paolo uh, signing up students after that reception. Here's one of the teachers with a couple of his students who completed the course. Um, there's Adam and Paolo studying with teachers. And uh, the first baptism in the, in the city of Yerevan, Armenia, um, uh, was a, a lady by the name of Gohar. And she was baptized by her teacher, Gary Aragon. And there is a photo of that. And this is now the missionary family who is there full time. So not only do we go into these cities and study with, the, with our Bible student contacts there face to face and they become Christians, but we also actively recruit um, families to go and permanently reside there. So there's permanent follow up. Uh, this, is a, this is a beautiful family. Uh, the Zarkundanskis, uh, they're actually from Canada, but they're there working full-time now in Yerevan with many of our World English Institute students. So this is what WI is all about. Uh, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Uh, Romans 10, teach, hear, believe, repent, obey. In WI, we like to say how beautiful are the fingertips of those who bring the good news because that's what you're doing with your fingertips. Amazing. You know, God knew the internet was coming. Uh, he knew that we were going to have this ability back before he created the earth. And it's just, it's just unbelievable to realize where we can go and what we can do. My wife and I became involved with WI uh, way back in the 90s. We were missionaries to the country of Romania. And many of our students who came to us were studying WI by postal correspondence. So we became involved with that, and most of, the, most of the churches of Christ, of the 21 churches of Christ in the, city of, in the country of Romania, most of them were planted and started through World English Institute contacts. This is an effective ministry. It will bless you. It will bless you if you take the time to get involved in it. Um, I do want to, my time is getting, well, we've got just a minute. Um, I wanted to, this is a very, this is a touching story. So we have a lot of World English Institute students in India, went there to, for some graduation ceremonies that were being conducted, and there were, there were several baptisms, one in particular in this village. We went to this village, and you will see in this video an old man at the end of this video is being baptized. He was a Muslim his entire life. And he did not speak English, but his granddaughter did. And so every day he would walk to the school after her WI classes, and it was about a 30-minute walk back to their home. And he would walk to her at their school, he would take her to school, and he would walk her home. And all the way home, she would tell him what she learned from her WI Bible classes. And so this went on for several months. And then he wanted to meet with the preacher one day, and he met with the preacher, and they studied... Uh, I, I was told they studied an entire afternoon what he, more about what his granddaughter had been teaching him, and he decided he wanted to uh, he wanted to renounce 
the Islam religion and become a Christian. And I happened to be there and grab my cell phone to get a, a video of this. But it's, it's one of the sweetest stories how a, his granddaughter brought him to the gospel and to Christ and to the kingdom uh, by just telling him the story as they walked home every day. And you'll see that in this video. Let me see. You may need to start that, Chris. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Love Him, love Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Love Him, love Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Thank Him, thank Him, all you little children. God is love. God this is the old is man love. that I was talking about. Thank Him, thank Him. They weren't sure how old children. he was. Uh, they thought love. he was in his late God 80s, maybe early love. 90s. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. A new brother in Christ. Isn't that amazing? I, I, I've seen this video, I don't know how many times. It still kind of chokes me up every time I see it. And you can't, you can't really see her, but his granddaughter is actually standing right back here behind him. Um, and she had a big smile on her face. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful moment. Okay, so, um, so here's that URL one last time. If you didn't get it the first time, I'll leave this up for a second. In the meantime, Paolo, we got about one minute. I want to show them. This is very important. If you registered tonight, you have an account, and you're looking at your account. And that's the last thing I want to do. I want to show them, Paolo, where the help button is. You will need, in order to just, it's very simple, very basic. You go to the help button, and it will take you step by step on how to claim a student, how to study with the student, how to send the student the new lessons, uh, and you always send two lessons at once. You send the English grammar lesson and the Bible lesson together. Um, and then uh, how to do all of that. So, uh, yeah, okay, you've already, you've already gone to it, Paolo. Good, very good. Um, so the help button is right up there. If you can see, let me, let me go down, let me, let me point to it. Right here, Paolo's got the, the cursor on it. And this is Paolo's account. Um, so right here is the help button. Go to that help button, and it'll take you through the process, okay? You need to know that because you guys, you're in. You didn't have to be screened. We trust that you are good, sound teachers, so you're in the account. Um, but because of that, you also did not get a lot of our introductory information. So that help button is going to be vital for you to understand how you, how you uh, can get students. The student board right here, we've got 213 te students waiting Scroll through that, Paolo. Look at this. Ethiopia, India is the next student. And here's the claim button. You just press the claim button uh, to see that. Um, keep going, Paolo. Yeah, maybe you can read that. Ethiopia, keep going, Paolo. Let's look at some of the countries. Uh, India, and we have another India. 16-year-old, single male, Christianity. Uh, Ethiopia again, Christianity, his religion. He's single, a student. Um, this one's India again, India again, Haiti, a uh, male French teacher, uh, Haiti, another Haiti, another Haiti, um, but the, it, you see what I mean, there's 213 of those right now waiting for somebody to take them, to study the Bible with them, <laughs> it's just amazing, we were missionaries in Romania, the first, couple, the first year before we knew about World English Institute, I prayed all day. Lord, just bring me a student. At one time, I, went, I left the house and said, Honey, I'm not coming home until I've set up two or three Bible studies. I got home late, but I had two or three Bible studies that night. 
Um, so this is just amazing. It contacts students waiting to study the Bible. It's just incredible. It's what we pray for. Um, okay, so let's, let's go ahead and pray, and then we can continue with the rest of the evening, closing out this evening service. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your attention. Um, I appreciate all the eyes that were very engaged tonight. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this time that we got to be together and to talk about ways that we can bear fruit for your kingdom. This is one way, Father, and we pray that you will help us in doing this. Uh, Father, those of us who are here, there might be some who uh, this is not a method that is, that's good for them, but we pray that all of us will leave our house every day and go do what we do and reflect Jesus Christ to the world around us and bear fruit for your name and for your kingdom to, to your glory and to all of your praise. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let's all stand and sing. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, save forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow. With grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Please be seated. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so very thankful that we've been allowed to be here tonight to hear this wonderful way that we can be a part of sowing the seed of your word. God, we pray that you will bless Tom and what he has been doing through his organization. And we pray, God, if our hearts have been pricked, that we will certainly act on this and become a part of his organization. Father, we, we pray that you will bless Tom and continue to be with him as he journeys speaking to other churches. Father, we have many in our group that are your church here that are ill, that are suffering from bereavement. We pray, God, that all of those that Ronnie mentioned in an earlier prayer, that you will be with them. Place your healing arms around them and bring them back to us. Father, be with us as we finish the night here. We pray, God, that you will bless every effort that we make in your name. Forgive us where we fall short, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we offer this prayer. Amen.
Let's all stand for our final song. If you have not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, you can exit out the, uh, the doors uh, to the back and then down the hall, and then it will be served there. Um, this may be a bit of a new song for everyone, um, but it, it's, the music makes it look more complicated than it really is. So males, the men, are the lead. The females follow with an echo. It's very simple. So if you know it, sing out. Don't pay attention to the notes and all those things. It's a little bit, it makes it look more complicated than it is. Tom, thank you so much for being here and a wonderful, inspirational message for everyone. So let's close our evening in song. Lord, the people praise you. Lift you up and raise you. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. Lord, the people love you. Place nobody above you. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. Bless your name, Lord Jesus, the only name that frees us, for you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. We will praise you right here and now, lest the hills and rocks cry out. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. And if we had 10,000 hands, we would bless you as you command. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. And if we had 10,000 tongues, we would bless you with every one. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. Singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. All the glory is due you. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. For you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're dismissed. Thank you.